Hi, this is Privateer Station, and today we'll bring you another clip of an interview aired in early September. An interview that uh, Sergei Pugachev, uh, ex-Russian oligarch, gave to Dmitry Gordon, a very well-known uh, Ukrainian journalist. Sergei Pugachev has an interesting career. He was an entrepreneur in the 80s, although USSR did not welcome such activities, and he spent some time in jail. In the 90s, uh, Pugachev established one of the first banks in the USSR, the Northern Commercial Bank. At the end of the 90s, he invested in the largest shipbuilding complex in Europe, at the St. Petersburg shipbuilding base of Baltiski Zavod and uh, Severna Verf, and in 60 engineering companies. At the start of 2000s, he consolidated under the management of the United Industrial Corporation his assets, and according to independent estimates, uh, around 2010, the total value of those assets was more than 12 billion. In November of 2000, he was elected to the Board of Russian Union of Industrialists and Entrepreneurs. From November 2000 to January 2003, he was vice president of that organization. In 2001, he became senator of Russian Federation, and he was representing uh, Republic Tuva in the Federal Assembly. However, by 2011, he fell out of favor, got a problem with uh, Putin and his regime, and he uh, had to flee the country. Original clip aired on the 7th of September, and this one is brought to you by The Voice of Lana. Enjoy. It has been a war already six months. Europe with the United States fight against Russian regime on their own terms as much as they can. Then we watch demonstration in Prague, capital of Czechia, which in 1968 was occupied by Soviet army. I recall my long conversations with uh, Sergei Yevtushenko, who wrote famous poem, Tanks on the Streets of Prague, and sent telegram to Brezhnev protesting military invasion to Czechoslovakia. And now in Prague, in 2022, 70,000 Russian protesters demand uh, negotiation with Russia, etc., etc. At the same time, there is a big discussion in Europe about visa ban for Russians. And there is a discussion about good Russians. What do you think of good Russians and about visa ban? Firstly, I better remember opinion of Alexander Galich. My fellow citizens, motherland in danger, our tanks run on foreign land. Yeah, this is right to the point about this war. So, about good Russians, visa bans. Listen, during 20 years of his ruling, Putin built huge spy network, literally spy network. I live in Europe many years. I was in shock what I saw in Great Britain. And that's the same in, in Germany, in France too. Less, but still. This is huge network. They paid by Putin's money. Even in Great Britain, firstly in Great Britain, listen, 300,000 most wealthy people in Great Britain are Russian citizens, resides there until now, including oligarchs, micro-oligarchs, middle-sized rich people, uh, their wives, their mistresses, uh, their cooks, drivers, gardeners, etc. 300,000 most rich people, huge community which worship Putin because thanks to him they got a chance to live in Great Britain. Do you think they socialize with the bus drivers? Of course not. They're in touch with the powerful people. I had a sad experience once when I needed to communicate in Supreme Court 
And I have to tell you uh, the same example we remember proceedings between Abramovich and Berezovsky when one of the members of the court took a vacation and became Abramovich's lawyer. It's crazy. So much money were pumped in there. Then there was no war at that time. And most of the time, nobody would even pay attention much to that. Nowadays, everything is changed. Now, this network, agents, spies, are still there. We could see in media news how some of them were arrested or were disclosed etc. How do you think he got there? They are not ideological perks. What idea it could be? Steal from Gazprom and love Putin? We understand their background. Surely money from oil and gas flooded Europe. And a lot of people cannot turn back now because they're just afraid of compromising evidences, etc. We should differ that there are no Putin supporters by ideolog ideological reasons, but we deal with so-called fifth colony in a bad meaning. It exists. Look at Hungary, for instance. No doubt what's going on there. And those agents are, are not only ordinary people, but people in politics, in power. Many members of European Parliament, they will be washed out with time, but not in one day. Do you think Europe should let in Russians and good Russians? Well, I guess six months more than enough to determine where you belong. As to me, I would use my example. When I realized what direction this country took, which was completely opposite uh, of my perception of life, freedom, etc., it was clear for me. I've heard a lot of excuses like, oh, young people migrate easily, they have nothing to lose, grab their computer and move. We all the generation have children, grandchildren, uh, how, we, how we can move. You know what? I'm sorry. I left property of $15 billion. And I didn't leave hiding in the middle of the night. I came to Putin and told him, I realize that your direction doesn't work for me. You're not interesting in my opinion either. So I decided to leave and I hope you can let me take uh, some money from my investments, from my businesses. Well, of course, I didn't get a chance. Everything was stolen. So imagine, I left all 15 billions. I left everything. It was my choice, of course. But this is about the choice. And I was leaving not during or on a break of a war. I left realizing that it won't get better. It's just only worst. Today, you're right uh, to say that it has been six months of a war, and they still discuss that some people are still there, no need to remove visas. Well, maybe when Ukrainian army uh, will march on the Red Square, they can make up their minds. Well, besides the point, of course, uh, there is some humanitarian needs or people who persecuted by Putin or Russian state, I would say better Russian state. Yeah. And these are people who were imprisoned. 
You know, in the uh, in old joke in Soviet times, uh, they say, what do you think people would say? What people? All people are in prison. This became reality today. What people? People are in prison. I want to know Navalny's point of view, but he's in prison. Who is going to migrate? Smart ones already left. Who stayed? They stayed. I observed personally some rich Russians traveled via Istanbul or Dubai. They arrived to Europe. They arrived to Europe with complaints. They are offended. We traveled uh, 35 hours, no direct flights, um, private jets banned. What the heck? We traveled here 20 years. What the hell is going on? They told me, French are morons. And I, well, by the way, I'm French too. And my wife and my children. The question is simple. You, you can see on the internet all good Russians everywhere. In Gruzia, Litva, etc. So, what should happen to make those who stay leave? To Mobuchi? What else they need to make up their mind? Last question. Maybe inappropriate and uncomfortable question. Probably you have seen a photo of Putin kissing a boy, kissing a boy to belly. Recently, he told some stories for school students about rubber booty. Definitely crap. Former deputy Ilya Ponomarev in his interview told me that Putin is bisexual. What do you think? I actually don't think about this. <laughs> I know him from 90s. All those uh, kissing of children are definitely weird, as a minimum, for me too. Many other strange things I know over the years, but we don't have time or interest in it now. But I could say, he has a complex from his childhood. Probably you have seen his photos, right? Yeah, childhood photos. As to one of his co-workers, who's still in high authority position now, Putin has a problem that he could not get laid for free. My apologies for details. And when he got some power and became president, literally, he was completely out of control. I know who and how brought him girls, sometimes even from streets, I'm sorry. You said it's by Freud law, Freud law. Yeah, I agree. I have read Freud and Carl Jung and Heidegger, but I'm still not an expert. You need to ask someone more professional. Question in pursuit. It's true that during the wedding a bride ran away from him. It was before uh, marriage with Lyudmila. I don't know this story, but Lyudmila wanted to leave him literally on the second day after wedding. She told me crazy things. Let's say he is weird in his personal life.
eloquent pause. <laughs> yep. The fact that he lost control in his sex life, I remember that. He got girls from near and far from everywhere. What can I say? Good thing to be a president. Depends. Depends. I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm kidding. It's like in famous joke. Do you hear news that President of Israel raped some girl? Really? I'm so jealous. It's from the same genre. So kissing a boy in Neville, well, in Rabbi Bart, gosh, it's completely insane. He's surrounded by different people, let's say, okay? Anything can happen, including ones with the rabbi, but, well, yeah, including, it's, as you say, by Freud law. It's all good. When Ukrainian army have parade on Red Square, they will take care of this subject too. Actually, I don't agree. No need to reorganize or something. People are different and they have to take care of themselves. And freedom is the most valuable quality of state. Because when someone try to so-called taking care of things, then happens exactly what's going on right now in Russia. Sergei thank you so much.